We're going to talk about the discriminant today. The discriminant says it tells how many roots we have. All of the things that we've been working on deal with what are the roots of the quadratic equation that we're dealing with. Now, this is part of the quadratic formula. I'm going to write it here. It is on your formula chart, but I want you to see the pieces because you actually, after today, have learned all of the pieces. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, it looks a little overwhelming. I promise it's not because all you have to do is find a, b, and c from your quadratic equation, plug it in, and there you go. Now, this part right here, negative b over 2a, this was our formula for our axis of symmetry. You've done that. Remember, we found out what x was, and we plugged it in, and we got y to get our vertex. We are going to focus on this piece today. This is called the discriminant. I ran out of room. Discriminant. Okay. This, this piece, again, it tells us how many roots we're going to have. Now, we've done a lot of things with quadratics in the last, I don't know, three, four weeks, however, many, however long we've been doing that. There are lots and lots of ways to find roots. Okay. We've talked about... If you look right here, we talked about the cross puzzle where you could do AC and you could do B and you could get your factors and set them equal to zero. So our roots for this would be three and negative eight, right? We, we factored. This one, a factor wouldn't work, but you could do complete the square which is what we were just working on, where you could say x squared minus 6x plus something, move my 2 over, then I would say 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. I could get x minus 3 quantity squared equals 7, and I could go from there, right? x minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 7, add 3, I would get positive 3 plus or all of this. So we can complete the square, we can factor. Those are all ways that we have talked about finding the roots. You're like Mrs. Ray, I can plug it into the calculator and do menu 6 to 1 just as well. Yes, if it's one of the questions where that is the easiest way to do it, by all means, do that. But again, sometimes you have to use a different method or it's going to ask you about the middle of a method. They like to give you questions like this and say what needs to go in the box, right? Or where's the mistake? Um, C, you cannot complete the square because 2 is not a perfect square. This is one that you're going to look at tomorrow, and this is where you would use the quadratic formula. I'm not going to do this one for you because you'll learn about that tomorrow. So if one of these methods doesn't work that we've already talked about, your quadratic formula is probably going to be your best bet. Now, you can use the quadratic formula on all quadratic equations. It's the one that works 100% of the time. Okay, it's just a little bit lengthier. This one is a difference of two squares. We did this a while back. So this is really just another way to factor your roots would be plus or minus 10, right? This is a special factor or special trinomial. All right? So those are all the ways that we've talked about in this unit for finding roots. Okay? Today we're not finding the exact roots. Today we are finding just how many they're going to be. Okay? So we're going to turn this page. I want to see what you remember about the square root method. The expression the square root of b squared minus 4ac 
And the quadratic formula helps you understand the nature of the equation. The discriminant, which is that piece inside, gives the information about the number of real solutions as well as the x-intercepts in the quadratic. We only need to figure out how many x-intercepts there are. Okay, I want you to keep in mind when we look at this table, our equation, we always want things in the standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, because you're going to need to be able to identify a, b, and c. Because when we do our discriminant, we're going to say b squared minus 4ac. And that's going to, and then we'll decide how many intercepts there are. So tell me, what is my a value in this first equation? One. What is my b value? What's my c? Negative eight. Make sure you take your sign with you. We've done a, b, and c's before. We did that when we did axis of symmetry. That's not difficult. And we're going to plug in what we know. Now, remember, when you square a number, especially if it's negative, you need to put it in the parentheses in that calculator. So it's just good practice to go ahead and do that. 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times a negative 8. You can do this in the calculator. You can do this in your head. 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times a negative 8 is a positive 32. So I get 36. Now, remember... You are going to have to take the square root of that. Can you take the square root of 36? Yes. Not 6. Plus or minus 6. So how many x-intercepts do you think there will be? 6. Just 2. There will not be 6. Not on a quadratic. That's a whole other Algebra 2 activity. You can go to your calculator. I'm going to show you. Okay. That, that is, that's not the actual root. No, this, listen, the entire quadratic formula will tell you what the actual roots are. We're not finding what the roots are. All we're doing is finding how many roots there will be. It's it's a it's a dis, yes it's a discovery process. If you can find the square root of it, there's gonna be two. You can plug this like plug it into your calculator. X squared plus two x minus eight, and you can see here there are in fact two. Notice it is not six and negative six. We don't care what they are today. I just want to know how many there are. Okay, hold on, let's finish this and then it will probably answer your question. What is A, B, and C on this second one? This is a discovery piece, guys. One and two and one. So when we plug it in and you're going to say, why is B always two? I don't know, it just happens to be that way in the examples. Minus four times one times one. Well, two squared is... 4, 4 times 1 times 1 is a minus 4. What do I get? Can I take the square root of 0? You can? 0. Last time I checked, 0 times 0 is 0. So it's only what? One solution. It, yes. So if we plug this in, plus 2x, plus 1, you can see here, it's only touching one time, one solution. What's going to happen on this one? 1, 2, and 5. So when we plug this in, 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. So I get 4 minus 20. Well, that's a negative 16. Can I take the square root of a negative? No. No. Zero solution. When we graph this, when we graph this, here's our y-intercept. It's going to be like this. It's not going to touch the x-axis, okay? So what I need, this is a little discovery piece. What I need you to take from this is when you find the discriminant, if it is a positive, there are two roots. 
If it is a zero, there is one root. If it is a negative, there are zero roots. Oh my goodness, that sounds really familiar. If you go back to page 468, we said when we did the square root method, if x squared was positive, there were two solutions. If it was zero, there was one solution. If it's negative, there are no solutions. That pattern doesn't change, but instead of it being an x squared, we're finding the discriminants. Okay? Yes. Because sometimes, well, I mean, you could, if, but I'm going to ask for specific things. Right? So if it's a positive, there's two. If it's zero, there's one. If it's a negative, there's none. Okay? On the EOC, if they give you a question like this, by all means, plug it in. But if they ask you which discriminant is set up correctly, you got to know what that means. Okay, so the calculator is not going to save you every time. You should not have any homework tonight because we have a lot of time. You are going to do you are going to do 5 to 13. Now, please listen, otherwise you're not going to do it right. All I need is for you to tell me how many solutions. The only answers that you are going to give me today are 2, 1, or 0. You need to set it up, though, and I need to see the work either in the margin or if you want to squeeze it here, I'll show you on number 5. You need to set up that b squared minus 4 times a times c and I need to see this from your calculator. You can definitely, definitely use that calculator. That's going to help you. But remember, when you put it in the calculator, that first number is squared. Put it in parentheses, please. Make sure you're using a minus sign here and not a negative. I got a square root of 196. That is a positive number. What does that mean? Two solutions. That's all I need to see. All right, this is actually going to be new Monday since I'm out tomorrow, uh, but you should be able to go ahead and finish it. All right.